Here's an actual question for you, Rip. Okay. It's not really a question. You got any Cowboy Bill Watts stories? Bill Watts is, God, he, at one time he was the greatest promoter in, in wrestling. Bill Watts was before WW, uh, WWWF when Vince brought it from his dad and became WWF. Watts, I worked two Superdome shows for Watts. One of them was 35,000 people there. The thing about it was in, it was in New Orleans, but we ran New Orleans 52 times a year. It wasn't like, oh, they're having WrestleMania in Tampa, but that'll be the only time they'll have wrestling in Tampa in a year. And everybody for a year will be planning WrestleMania weekend coming over from Europe and whatever, blah, blah, blah. These are just the, the main guys. Uh, Watch would advertise a, uh, uh, oh, in, in three weeks, we're having uh, the, the show at the Superdome. So I got to wrestle two Superdome shows. So, wow. I, I remember Watts said, hey, we're having a party. You going, uh, you staying over? I said, no, I'm going home, sleep in my own bed, I'm going to go to the gym, and I'll be in the next town tomorrow. I wasn't a partier. Didn't have no interest in it. Watts, everything we did with Watts was serious. Serious goddamn business. He said, if you guys go out in the bars and you get in the fight, that's fine, but you better win. He said, if you lose, you're fired. And guys would have trouble with each other in the ring. He'd say, okay, you guys go in the room, fight it out, hash it out. Don't care, but you're wrestling each other for the next six weeks. That's what it is. And I want good matches. If you want to beat the shit out of each other, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit who wins. Just have a good attitude when you walk out of that room and usually nobody fought, but they realized they were just stupid and just to get along and everybody's got to bend a little bit because it was, uh, we did so many miles there. God. And I was, sometimes I'd go with Ernie Ladd. Sometimes I'd go with King Kong Bundy. Sometimes I'd go with, with Grizzly Smith. And we was wrestling in, in Texas and in Louisiana and, and Mississippi and Arkansas and Oklahoma. And it was, it was, it was a big place you made and I, you'd make more money there working the first match. And a lot of times he'd have some of the best wrestlers that have been on top working underneath because he wanted good matches. It could have been a whole thing, but he could make a star out of anybody. That's the first place for Magnum TA. That's where he first got his big break. Junkyard dog got his first big. I was working with junkyard dog and Nick Goulas in the seventies. And he went off to Calgary, come to Watts, Watts saw something in him. Once dog was on fire, you go to those like Greenville, Greenwood, New Orleans. It would be, it seemed like a 90% black audience, but they were full. That's the thing. Watts all watched. Watts didn't see white. He didn't see black. He saw green. Watts could make you money. You worked hard. You had to get there early. He had laws. He had ways you wrestled in the match. You don't do this in the first four matches. You respected the referee. You respected the rules. And if you don't kick out of something, that's the pin. It's on you. He would fine you. And it, and all the boys would know about it. That's like the one time me and I, I might have told this story on here about my car breaking down. Yeah, too. with Bundy. Yes. Okay. I, well, I've already told, so I ain't going to yeah. tell it again. So but, is that why some people maybe talk bad about him or didn't like him as a promoter? Is because he was serious? And yeah, he was strict. All, yeah, he was strict. Gonna, that one. That was the use. greatest territory there was. Now I'm not asking like you personally, but uh -huh. maybe overall, what what was his pays like? Was it? Did people make money there? They wouldn't go there if they didn't make money. Well, people say they go to used to go to Memphis and not really make money. I've no, Memphis that. was a shit to watch. But okay, yeah, it was a shithole. But people still. But everybody, okay. Now, just think if you live, that's like at one time, and just think in Tennessee, you had three territories at one time. You had Memphis, you had Nashville, and you had Knoxville as a territory. So you could be, you could homestead and live there forever. Yeah, if you wanted to. That's like uh, on the West Coast, you could work Vancouver, you could work Portland, then go down to work San Francisco and L.A. You could stay on the West Coast your whole uh, for 20 years if you wanted to and just space it out. You could put it. There was so many places to go then. Right. It, it was great. Now there ain't shit to go to. You're either in a WWE.
Anybody ever challenge Watts? Saying, no, they like, just he I, just fire you. Then you're just done. No, yeah, you're done. He didn't give a shit. Because what Bill always did, he'd hold back two weeks' pay. Oh. So then if you left, if you if you just uh if you left with no notice, good. He'd just keep your last two checks. So that that ended ended a lot of that. Big gold and a bill fold. So swole that I can't get the shit closed. So I money fold and rubber band wrap.